Beginning in the 1950s, the Savannah River site produced plutonium and other materials used in nuclear weapons. Over the next four decades, that production effort resulted in the generation of liquid radioactive waste that is being stored on an interim basis in 51 underground waste storage tanks that are a part of the environmental cleanup effort managed by the U.S. Department of Energy at the Savannah River site. Removing salt waste, which fills approximately 90% of the tank space in the Savannah River site tank farms, is a major part of emptying the site's waste tanks that currently contain approximately 38 million gallons of waste. To help accomplish this effort, the Department of Energy initiated the construction of the Salt Waste Processing Facility, which was completed in the spring of 2016. The Department of Energy and contractor Parsons have now turned their attention to getting the plant up and running, and once operational in 2018, the salt waste processing facility will significantly increase processing rates over the existing interim system in an effort to more rapidly empty the site's waste tanks. Jack Craig is the Department of Energy manager in charge of the Savannah River site. Cleaning up the Savannah River site's tank farms is one of the Department of Energy's highest priorities. The salt waste processing facility will allow us to finish that objective more quickly. Our goal was to process all of the salt waste at the Savannah River site within 10 years of starting the process. We're excited about entering this next phase of our cleanup operations. The Department of Energy is focused on completing the liquid waste mission at SRS as efficiently and as safely as possible. Now that construction is complete, the Department of Energy and its contractor Parsons are focusing on testing the plant's systems and training the workforce to operate the plant in preparation for the start of operations in 2018. Parsons Senior Vice President Frank Shepard is the project manager for the Salt Waste Processing Facility. Completing construction was important, but make no mistake, our goal is not to simply deliver the Salt Waste Processing Facility, but rather to successfully complete testing and commissioning and begin hot operations. The Salt Waste Processing Facility's key milestones are as follows. SWPF design contract awarded to Parsons in 2002. Base mat installed in 2009. First story under construction in April 2011. First vessels installed in 2012. Construction completed in April 2016. Operations to begin in 2018. At the height of construction, more than 800 people were employed to support building this key processing facility at Savannah Riverside. Even after construction, DOE expects the SWPF will continue to employ hundreds of people for more than a decade, both at the plant and in Aiken, South Carolina. One of the hallmarks of the SWPF project since its inception has been safety, which is a top priority for the Department of Energy, Parsons, and the workforce. I have people coming up to me all the time, you know, either pointing out something that they feel like was putting the workers at risk um, or a better way to do a job. Out here, all they preach about is safety, 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 and I did a couple of um, projects before, but this project right here, that's all they preach about is safety, so I'm pretty good with that. Once operational, the salt waste processing facility will be the cornerstone of the Savannah River site's radioactive liquid waste system. Its key mission will be to separate and concentrate highly radioactive waste, mostly cesium, strontium, actinides, and waste slurry from the less radioactive salt solution. These radioactive wastes were generated during the Savannah River site's Cold War era mission to produce plutonium for the U.S. nuclear weapons complex. Separating liquid wastes from the less radioactive salt solution allows the Department of Energy to dispose of the waste in the safest, most efficient way. After completing the initial separation process, the concentrated high activity waste will be sent to the nearby defense waste processing facility where it will be immobilized in glass and stored in vaults until it can be placed in a geological repository. The decontaminated salt solution will be mixed with cement-like grout at the nearby saltstone facility for disposal on site. The plant includes more than 27 miles of piping 
which if laid end to end would reach almost from Washington DC to Baltimore. There are more than 91,000 tons of concrete making up the salt waste processing facility's walls, making the plant heavier than even the largest aircraft carriers in the U.S. Navy. Pam Marks is the Department of Energy Manager in charge of SWPF at the Savannah River site. The salt waste processing facility is a key part of our cleanup mission here at the Savannah River site. Once operational, we will truly have a complete high functioning system for managing the stored liquid waste. SWPF will allow the Department of Energy to separate the salt waste at nearly 10 times the rate of current operations. It stands alongside the Defense Waste Processing Facility and the Saltstone Facility to finish our cleanup mission. This allows us to empty high-level waste tanks more rapidly and prepare waste for permanent disposal while being protective of our workers, the public, and the environment. Looking forward, the Department of Energy and Parsons are continuing to seek ways to make operations at the Salt Waste Processing Facility more efficient and further contribute to the long-term mission at the Savannah River site. The Salt Waste Processing Facility includes a state-of-the-art analytical laboratory that will not only be used for testing and analyzing samples from the Salt Waste Processing Facility operations, but also be a resource to the entire Savannah River site to supplement and expand the existing analytical laboratory capacity. In addition, the Department of Energy and Parsons are working to deploy a next-generation solvent in the salt waste processing facility that will increase processing rates. The baseline plan for the salt waste processing facility is to process six million gallons of waste per year, and Parsons has demonstrated throughput capacity of nine million gallons per year. With the next generation solvent, the Department of Energy and Parsons expect the salt waste processing facility's capacity to increase to 12 million gallons per year, twice the baseline plan for the plant. Before the plant begins operations, the Department of Energy and Parsons will spend roughly 30 months testing each of the plant's systems, training the workforce to operate the plant, and confirming the plant's readiness. As with all nuclear facilities, the transition from construction to operations is a specific, deliberate process managed by the Department of Energy to ensure the plant works as intended and is ready to handle nuclear materials. As the project moves into commissioning, startup, and operations, safety will continue to be the top priority. We are proud to play a role in bringing this mission-critical facility into operation. I speak for everyone here at the Savannah River site when I say we are proud of our workforce and the great job they do every day.